Look, you dumb motherfuckers. Like, you could have you could have just doubled your fucking wealth over, you know, over the last year. Had you just, like, shut the fuck up and been like, maybe I'm poor and working at a dead-end job that I fucking hate because I don't understand how money actually works. And maybe these Bitcoin guys who have, like, made some money and some self-independence for themselves, like, maybe they have a point. But instead they go, this is a far-right psyop that's being played in order to try to destroy the, the wonderfulness of modern monetary theory. And the government needs to be able to print out money because how else can we spread the love and make sure that all people everywhere are always equal and have all of the equal opportunity always? Particularly the brown people that we want to bomb out of existence because, you know, they need to use my fucking pronouns. And that's why we're bombing the shit out of them is because they're hateful, racist pieces of garbage that, you know. And, and, then, and then there's just like the like, well, like, fuck Israel. We can't like support them. But like Ukraine is great. Or the people doing the opposite one. I'm like, what? Like, why the fuck is the red or the blue people telling you to bomb the right people? Regardless, like, maybe you should just be upset that brown people are, you know, and, and in the case of Ukraine, white people, too, are getting blown up. Like, the bombs are not racist. They, they will kill people whether they're white or brown. And I don't know. It would just be really great if people could be like, you know, maybe we should just kind of talk to people instead of murder them. But, again, I'm not a politician. Maybe there's something I'm missing here. Maybe they need wanna... to be murdered. I don't know. You can just do things. You don't have to wait for anybody. Nothing's decreed. Like, listen. Fiat is a is a fucking disease of the mind. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. And every currency on earth that's not Bitcoin is fiat. Ethereum is fiat. Solana is fiat. Tether is fiat. They're all fiat, okay? And then obviously all the fiat currencies are fiat. But fiat is not just affecting the monetary supply and material goods like iPhones and shit. No, fiat affects you. It affects your mind. It affects the way you think. You think that the world is decreed to you from scribes on high. It's not. The world is built by people that get out and build the fucking world. So if you want to do something, just go do it. Get politically active if you want to be politically active. Build a business if you want to build a business. Build a family if you want to build a family. Build an estate if you want to build an estate. Go to Mars if you want to go to Mars. Fucking just go do it. Do what you want to do. That is the Bitcoin story. Not by decree. No one tells you to do it. You decree it. You fucking decree it. You go out and do what the fuck you're going to do in the world. That's what we're doing here in Bitcoin. Fuck this fiat bullshit. Fuck CBDCs. And it's time for us to really start rebuilding in a meaningful and thoughtful way on top of a Bitcoin standard. Because that's really an American standard. What the fuck am I doing listening to this person? I'm just going to do whatever the fuck I want. No! I'm doing what I want! <laughs>
just well, are ever, you ever since they stole the 2020 election you got to stay up all night now you know it's uh, you, you got to keep them in check so is this like a is this like a uh like a young children thing or is this like uh your brain no, is all spun out i from... was it no it's because i was at bitcoin mags live stream for like 12 hours yesterday and i didn't get home until like you know 1 30 a.m and then i fucking didn't go to sleep until 2 a.m and then because i have young children i was up at 5 a.m oh <laughs> so it's good like you know no, good times I... good times my sleep got absolutely fucked a couple nights ago because, like, I was like, I'm going to stay up a little late and watch a movie. And then my brain was like, yeah, you want to stay up fucking late, asshole? How about you fall asleep at 4 a.m.? So this See, last like night, that? I was like, you know what? Like, this shit isn't worth it anymore. Like, I'm a fucking adult. I'm going to bed at 9 o'clock. I'm going to get up at 6 o'clock and, like, work out and do all my, like, adult shit because I'm just, like, fucking sick. Uh, like, I could do that shit when I was in my 20s, but, like... That's a long ways away from now. So now I need got to like take care of my body or it's going to fuck me up. Yeah. Dude, it's I I was out uh I was fishing like this whole weekend like a dude's trip uh with my my dad and my father-in-law and like some other older dudes. Um and Drought. just like uh yeah, we were fishing f fishing for steelheads. It was a wonderful time. My first time fishing for steelheads had a fucking blast. But like you're out in the river all goddamn day. And by the time we got back, like, and I was like the young buck of the group and still I'm like, 7 PM. It's about time to turn in like, fuck. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I, I feel your pain. But then last night I got home from the trip and like was watching MSNBC for fun and, uh, stayed up yeah. until like three or something. Because oh, I was... did either of you watch the view this morning? It no. was, like... uh, mm, it was so good. It was so good. <laughs> I would highly Desc recommend describe it. it. Well, they start <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg starts off with tears in her eyes and she's trying to be magnanimous. And uh, she she goes, well, yeah, let's talk about let's get into it. And then she passes it to Joy Behar and Joy Behar holds it together for like 90 percent of the time. And she's like, you know, we got to It was a fair election and we got to just but he's a racist. And then they just <laughs> like descend into <laughs> it's a full struggle session. Oh, my God. <laughs> It was amazing. Like, honestly, it could have been pay-per-view. I would have paid $75 to watch it. It was one of the greatest things I've ever seen. It was amazing. So, like, what what are they going to do now other than just, like, malfunction and have a hard time? Like, I'm, I'm just really enjoying uh, getting to, like, sit in this space and being like, democracy is super great, isn't it? Isn't it wonderful <laughs> that we elected a fascist Hitler? Who's waited for his second term to implement the genocide against all of the people that are you and they're like it's uh the democ good uh mm. so i'm the, I'm really... the glitching is real right now like yeah you, you've like it's I, I you almost feel bad or i would almost feel bad if the people who are glitching like we're glitching right now weren't so insufferable for so long like i would yeah. almost feel bad you know what i mean but I, yeah, i'm yeah. not quite there yet no i don't well, feel I'm... a shred of guilt about anything i'm just laughing at all the memes it's hilarious like, look, like, fuck this voting in democracy nonsense, but, like, I'm, I'm really enjoying these liberals that, that have used the last four years to try to cram all this fucking nonsense down everybody's throat to now have to deal with, like, the reactionary against that. Uh, in addition to the fact of that, uh, like, it's about fucking time. Like, the last, the last four years were, like, really fucking wacky. Mm -hmm. Like, we had, we, we still have this geriatric president. Like, what the fuck happened to Joe Biden? Did he just, like, vanish? Yep. Like, what? It's just so weird to me and that like in the meanwhile the whole liberal machine keeps marching on being like yeah, like this is so anyways I, I'm just excited to watch this whole thing kind of uh, break down and, and, and crash into flames and see what happens <laughs> I I woke up feeling um, just proud of America and the reason I was proud of America is not because I America voted the way I wanted them to vote which they did like in a landslide victory um the reason i was proud of them it was proud of the feeling of being american was that propaganda doesn't work on us you tried to psyop us and we just aren't fucking having it because being an american means doing whatever the fuck we want and you are not allowed to tell us what to do that's that's the feeling that's the energy i woke up with like the american people are exactly who i thought they were you know it's like that meme we they are who we thought they were they are who we thought they were you know it's like 
The American people are who I thought they were, and they're just as fucking wild and untamed and fucking crazy and individualistic as I've always expected and, and, and needed them and wanted them to be and known that they were. And I just fucking love it. I love seeing the results come in. And then the people who are the professional propagandists, the Joe Scarborough, the MSNBCs, the Rachel Maddows, the Whoopi Goldbergs, right? Professional paid propagandists go, I can't believe calling them racist garbage didn't work. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck all Dude. of you. <laughs> Fuck you. It's, well, it's, it, it's interesting because, like, it's uh, – it's this really reactionary, hateful thing where, and it's like super hypocritical where it's like, fuck you, you racist piece of goddamn shit. Like, you need to go into the fucking concentration camp and be brutally raped and tortured because you won't tolerate other people, you fucking sick fucking pig. And it's like, <laughs> you know, maybe there should be some self reflection here about some of those things you said and are expressing. And, and like, I don't yeah. know. And like, this is the thing that I've been trying to deal with kind of in the liberal bubble I'm in. It's like, hey, do you guys think that like all the hatred and vitriol that you're directing at white people and, and about like how useless men are and that they really obstruct everything that could have ever been done that's good might have a little something to do with this? In addition to like, perhaps we're in the position that we're in because of the way that you keep shitting on all these people that actually might have some degree of value to society. And I'm not saying they're better or worse than anybody, but maybe trying to direct all your hate towards them could have something to do with the outcome that came here, as opposed to you being like, hey, these people we'd like to include them in the fold rather than just kind of doing the reverse hate thing. But, yeah. you know, Dude, I, don't, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a politician. It's, it's tough to tell people, like, hey, you know all that shit that's in your head? That's <laughs> not real. It's just not real. None of it. You made it up. You're living in magical fairy princess land, okay? And what I would what I would want you to do is form a hypothesis and test it. You know what I mean? Like experiment. Are you in magical fairy princess land? Can you fly? You know what I mean? Maybe you start on the ground first. Don't jump out of a window. But like, you know, maybe test your – flap your wings a little. See if it works. If it doesn't, maybe we have the wrong hypothesis. I don't know. Weird. Whoa. Just falling here. That would require like critical – thought though and actual self-reflection and like now they've just like they've gone the other way and they're like well actually the black and latinos are racist too and they clearly <laughs> like and you're like hold, hold on hold on guys i was told because of the intersectional hierarchy that they couldn't they be can't be racist racist yeah, can't. but but now they are racist and the arabs too some of those arabs we don't like them the cubans especially escaping communism coming here voting for a republican who do they think they are it's ridiculous yeah it's fucking – will there be any self-reflection, though? Like no. any, like, moment of inward – like, looking inward to say, maybe we were kind of part of the problem. Huh. They're, they're nowhere hmm. close to being ready to deal with reality. Um, you know, in, in a sense, it's kind of like – it's a huge miscarriage of, uh, you know, American civil duty that's happened because these people have been so badly brainwashed and psyoped by the mainstream media – um, you know, these professional state propagandists that, you know, you, you can't help but feel a little bit bad for them. But like, at the same time, I mean, there, there's nothing to do but to get out of your echo bubble. Like you, you, the only person who can crawl out of Plato's cave is you. And I don't know how to explain to you that the shadows aren't real. They're just not real. And so like, those of us who are out of the cave, we, we all talk about how retarded you all are in the cave, but we don't know how to actually get you out of the cave. Because every time we try and bring you out, you fucking bite us and go rabid, you know? It's and we can, like, literally tell you the cave, the cave, the exit is right there. Like, this is where this is where you need to go to get out of the cave. And they're like, uh, that exit looks not really like it's inclusive. Um, I don't think I'm going to go out that way. <laughs> Sorry, Casey. Well, go like, ahead, man. With, with it being at a Bitcoin all-time high right now, like, that, you know, this is what I came on with is that, like, Look, you dumb motherfuckers! Like, like you could have, you could have just doubled your fucking wealth o over, you know, o over the last year had you just like shut the fuck up and been like, maybe I'm poor and working at a dead end job that I fucking hate because I don't understand how money actually works. And maybe these Bitcoin guys who have like made some money and some self independence for themselves, like maybe they have a point. But instead, they go. This is a far-right psyop that's being played in order to try to destroy the, the, the wonderfulness of modern monetary theory and 
the government needs to be able to print out money because how else can we spread the love and make sure that all people everywhere are always equal and have all of the equal opportunity always? Particularly the brown people that we want to bomb out of existence because, you know, they need to use my fucking pronouns. And that's why we're bombing the shit out of them is because they're hateful, racist pieces of garbage that, you know. And, and, then, and then there's just like the like, well, like, fuck Israel. We can't, like, support them. But, like, Ukraine is great. Or the people doing the opposite one. I'm like, what? Like, why the fuck is the red or the blue people telling you to bomb the right people Regardless, like, maybe you should just be upset that brown people are, you know, and, and in the case of Ukraine, white people, too, are getting blown up. Like, the bombs are not racist. They, they will kill people whether they're white or brown. And I don't know. It would just be really great if people could be like, you know, maybe we should just kind of talk to people instead of murder them. But, again, I'm yeah. not a politician. Maybe there's something I'm missing I, here. Maybe they need I to be murdered. This I don't know. Like the, Bit the Bitcoin price as a lens by which to view the world, it's like... Uh, last night when I was watching the election results, uh, I was at Bitcoin Magazine Studio and they had all the boards up and all the stuff, you know, um, and I'm watching it all. It's like the traditional media. Um, and I'm, I'm on my phone looking at the Bitcoin price and I'm like, Trump's going to win. Like, the, he, it just got bid in the markets. This is going to happen. I, I now know the future ahead of traditional media. Um, and it's the same thing with like Poly Market was telling us Trump was going to win for months and months because people have been actually, you know, putting economic value behind those, those, uh, you know, those votes that they're making with their economic capital. Right. And so, you know, if you're listening to traditional media, um, you're trying to do sense making that way. And you have like, you know, the, the poll, the Nate Silvers of the world, the pollsters telling you, and Seltzer telling you like, Oh, he's going to win Iowa, whatever. Like they, these people have no skin in the game. So there, there's no proof of work to their predictions um, and that and you need to once you have proof of work as a lens you you as a bitcoiner look for it and see it and find it everywhere and anything that you can attach proof of work to um you you realize that this is a real thing and you can you can bank on it but i, I mean people that don't have that are doing everything proof of stake right like they just don't understand that reality that that unfortunately they are living in there's nothing you can do about it you can't you can't escape that reality, right? Like, you are inside that reality. Well, it, it, to be clear, like, like proof of stake is a methodology that's, like, operable. And, like, that's called socialism. Like, I can actually, like, hijack the government <laughs> and be like, hey, Mr. Musk, like, fuck you. We're going to, like, steal all your shit. It's like, cool. Like, now that we did that, guys, like, how much more runway do they have? They're like, we have, we have four days. We, we, got, <laughs> we got four days to, to run the budget now. It's like, oh. It's like the guy that's... Wait, wait, the guy that's getting us into space and, 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 like, gave us, like, satellite internet and shit, like, stealing everything from him got us four days of runway? And they're like, yeah. So, uh, we're out of time now, so who are we going to rob next? They're like, uh, that, that Amazon guy, yeah, like, fuck him. He, he's, he's, like, stealing from people, and he's hateful. It's like, yeah, that, why do you think he has better approval ratings than, like, they than like everyone, than like the U.S. military. Like it seems like people really like him. They're like, ah, oh, cause, uh, cause he's he's racist, <laughs> right? So let's steal his shit. And like and like that's what proof of stake is about. It's like fuck these other people. We can like steal their shit and like remake the rules so that like stealing shit is okay when mm. we steal shit for the right reasons. And this is like the clusterfuck that's Ethereum. Like, if you've watched like what their monetary policy has been like since, like since the fucking Dow fork that happened, it's been, it's literally always been like, yeah, but like the, this is the one time it will ever happen. Well, maybe, yeah. maybe we'll change it again. You know what? Fuck it. We're just gonna kind of do whatever we want. And like that's fine, but it's not gonna work out long term, and there's gonna be very severe fucking consequences. So, you could learn about how economics works and it turns out that like no nobody likes being stolen from and it turns out like if i can steal from you i can steal from other people too and that's like a really big problem so you should probably be invested in a system that goes you know what we're not going to steal from anybody ever and they're like but what about hitler and pol pot and it's like yeah it turns out that even fucking assholes we like need to respect their right to property too and they're like, but if we do that, then, like, all of the racists and hateful people will win. And it's like, you know, maybe you need to expand your worldview beyond thinking that everybody's hateful and racist. And that's kind of their, their main problem. By the way, like, I've never actually 
like when I was younger, I had a couple friends' dads who were like pr pretty racist and stuff. But it was always this like, I, I don't know. Like I've never met somebody who like really had as their like main thing. They're like, yeah, but like fuck the Mexicans and the black people. <laughs> it's, like, it's like usually like, yeah, but what about Habib? Like he was helping us out earlier. And they're like, well, yeah, he, he's he's brown and and that that's fine. But and I'm like, so you're like not really that racist? And they're like, well, you know, they they're trying to take our jabs. And it's like, <laughs> well, but were you gonna? Were you gonna do the gardening? And they're like, well, no, fuck no, I ain't gonna get wet today. It's like, uh, maybe he, maybe Jesus is pretty good at what he does. You know, I, I'm just saying. Like, I don't think he's taking your job. You don't, you don't seem like you're gonna be gardening in the rain. I'm just saying. Uh, I think so much. Of this is like a, it's, it's, it is a mirror, right? Like, what you see in everybody else tends to be more of a reflection of what you have going on in the inside than mm -hmm. what is actually going on with them. Because you don't fucking know them. You have no way of knowing what their, what their beliefs are, whether or not they are a, a giant bigot and a racist, or whether they're just some man or woman trying to live their life, put food on the table for their kids, and not get just absolutely bent over a barrel by the government. Which is like a reasonable thing. Like, nobody really wants to be bent over a barrel by the government, right? But apparently if you push back against that too hard, you are given one of these labels. But then it's like you have kind of this proof of concept here that this is just a reflection of what is going on in a lot of these, uh, you know, bigot callers minds when you see them th say things like, you know, Oh, I can't like, why would all of these, uh, Latinos vote for their own deportation? It's like, do you think the only Latinos in the country are here illegally? Like, do you, like, is that what you think that they're voting for their own deportation? Like, there's lots of Latinos here who came here legally, like a ton of them. And it turns out a lot of them were escaping the same sort of bullshit, socialist, verging on communist policies that you're trying to push on them now. And then you turn around and call them racist because they didn't agree with you. Like it's this insane paternalistic projection. And I like, but again, the sad thing is, I don't know if there is ever like a come to Jesus moment where they're like, you know what, you know what guys? We went too far. We were wrong. That was, that was pretty messed up for a few years there, huh? We're cool now. Let's keep things civil. We're not going to call everybody Nazis anymore, especially you white, lib or you white women, you know, you white suburban women, you Nazis. Like, it just, like, turns out calling everybody a Nazi is a really bad campaign move. Like, yeah. I don't know who, like, how, who could have known, right? Shocking. If you do not want to be bent over a barrel by an authoritarian state, go to bitbox.swiss walker and use promo code walker for 5% off the fully open source Bitcoin only Bitbox O2 hardware wallet. Then get your Bitcoin off the exchange and into your own self custody. But if you do want to be bent over a barrel by an authoritarian state, no judgment, I mean, maybe just a little, but definitely do not go to bitbox.swiss slash walker and use that promo code walker. Bitcoin is ripping, and soon your stack will be worth a heck of a lot more in fiat value than it is today. We all know one Bitcoin equals one Bitcoin. But regardless, now is the perfect time to make sure that you have your security locked down with Bitbox. And I really want to emphasize that the Bitbox O2 is easy as hell to use. Whether you are brand new to Bitcoin and it's your first time setting up a hardware wallet, so you're understandably a little bit nervous, or you are a well-seasoned psychopath. Again, it's Bitcoin only, and again, it is fully open source. You can head to their GitHub and verify that for yourself. You don't need to trust me or Bitbox. When you go to bitbox.swiss slash walker and use the promo code walker, not only do you get 5% off and prevent yourself from being bent over a barrel by an authoritarian state, but you also help support this fucking podcast. So thank you. I, I think, you know, you guys are both being charitable and trying to like diagnose them. And I spent a lot of, I spent a lot of time trying to do that too, like get into their heads and understand their psychology. Like, well, how could you think this way? It's so severely retarded. Um, and now I'm just like, listen, we have now unfettered control of, uh, you know, all three branches of government. And it's like, we're, I don't listen at the Thanksgiving dinner table. I don't pay attention to the conversation at the kid's table. I don't care what the kids are talking about. I don't, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter. It's like, uh, what, what, what color crayon do you like? I don't know. I like, uh, I like burnt umber. That's my favorite. Yeah. It's like, no, who gives a fuck? Um, we're at the adult table now and it's about stacking wins on the board. And, you know, like for instance, like, I mean, Trump is the first Bitcoin president. Vance owns Bitcoin. We now have 
um, the opportunity to like see real Bitcoin appoint like appointments be made where like people who are being recommended for high purchase of power will be people that are sympathetic to Bitcoin, if not Bitcoiners themselves from an ideological standpoint. And to me, that's the most fascinating thing that's going on. And whatever like woke mind virus is like eating the brains of like the liberal white women we all know. Um, I don't give a single fuck. Like, drink your Chardonnay, bitch, and like, hopefully it cures it. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. You know, <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's funny because I have a good friend who, like, you know, he, he's like, like deep Bay Area roots. So like, everybody's like very, very liberal, uh, and he, and like, he's a bit of the black sheep of the family. So he, you know, he was like, I'm gonna vote for Trump, and the, this, this is like very upsetting to his family, uh, and like, you know, everyone was getting outraged with him, and he was like, look, he was like, look, like the only way we get to talk about politics now is like, you have to steel man my position. Like you don't get to come to me and be like, but Trump's like a racist bigot. Like you need to actually come to me and be like, well, perhaps you want to elect Trump because like you feel different about economic policies or whatever. And I found like, this is the best way to actually like force people to, to like think in a meaningful way. Cause like, otherwise they'll do the same bullshit with you. But I've, I've found like it, it really glitches people pretty hard. Cause I can be like, look, like I, I understand your position. Like you think Kamala as being the the first black woman president is really going to create policies that champion and allow for, you know, people of various and diverse backgrounds to be able to have a real leg up in America. Totally hear that. I have a fundamentally different position that I don't believe that that actually helps people in a unique way. And I actually think there's a very discreet kind of racism that's going on with that when you say, Hey, we need to give reparations to black people because they're not good enough to be able to compete with the white people. It's like, like they're, eh, you know, like I, I see something a bit racist in that. And like, again, I'm not trying to take away from that. There, there can be good reasoning behind that. But, you know, particularly living in the state of California where this has actually been proposed as like a meaningful bill. Seemed pretty fucking racist to me to steal a bunch of money from me and give it to a bunch of, of you know, people you know, I think in this case, just black people that are going to be getting that money directly when, as far as I know, they directly were not enslaved by me or my ancestors. And I'm not sure what their relationship is to it either. And the same thing with Kamala Harris, like black woman, this is this, you know, great that if she was elected, that she would be the first black woman. But let's be very clear. She's not like African American. She's a Jamaican woman. That's where she's descended from. And again, like, doesn't take away from the fact that that is would be the first black woman president, but she is not an African American, and that's a bit misleading to kind of do that whole pitch. Uh, but most people are really uninterested in this just because they they have a deep vested interest in what their emotional capacity is, and that's one of the things I've found deeply disturbing about a lot of liberal ideology is that like if something feels right, that means that like that that is right. And when you try to pick that apart, they, you know, they go, well, that's racist. And that doesn't feel like if I'm, that doesn't feel good. So we can't be that. And like, it turns out that like, may, maybe there's a little bit of racism you have going on there with, you know, wanting to steal money from white people and give it to all the other people. Just saying. Dude, it's, you know, it's, an, you mentioned like this friend who's uh, bucking the trend in his Bay Area family, right? And something I just think is so genuinely sad is that we are at a place right now, and, and I'm sure you know people could come up with examples of like, well, in the Civil War, families were broken up over that. And it's like, okay, let's not, please let's not compare the two, the two moments in time. But the fact that people will literally stop speaking to their family, basically, you know, dis you know disavow them, like, well, my, my mom voted for Donald Trump, and so I can't, I just, I won't speak to her anymore. I can't possibly, because it turns out, even though this woman loved me and raised me my entire life and made so many sacrifices for me and did everything she possibly could to give me every advantage I could have, she's a racist bigot. <laughs> and it's like people will literally stop. Like, I'm sure you guys know people. Like, I can think of a number of people within circles I run in, like, off the top of my head that have, like, nope, I won't be talking to them anymore. Like, I, like, I'm out. You know, no more family Thanksgiving for me. I can't be around this racism. No more Christmas. I... You're not going to see your grandchild. Uh, I, I don't know any of those examples personally out of no more grandchildren time. That'd be like especially fucked up. But the point is like, how do you have so much hate in your heart that you cannot, you cannot get over the fact that somebody that you love and that loves you 
may have a slightly different opinion than you. And that the fact that their opinion is different is so offensive to you that you would break apart those ties that bind you for a fucking political candidate, for a fucking agent of the state apparatus. That is fucking insane. Like that, that truly blows my mind. And I think that's, that is really sad. If, if somebody by some chance is listening to this, who's like, well, I haven't talked to my uncle Jim in two years because he voted for so-and-so on either side of the fucking aisle, who cares? Like you should be able to argue the most with the people you love the most, because no matter what, at the end of the day, you guys fucking still love each other. Get the fuck over it. You're going to have disagreements. It's okay. That's a beautiful well, thing. And you should have people that challenge you. It, it's both about like a, First of all, it's about like a, a a really weak frame of individual reference that that that's very uh, frankly ca callow at the bottom, because like if you you have to identify so strongly with a political party or a movement that that becomes definitive about you and that like you 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 need to to break with other people because they're disagreeing with it. Because like look like I'm clearly like a fucking freak Bitcoiner and like everyone in my life doesn't agree with the Bitcoin thing despite the fact that they've seen me have very, very fat gains while they have lost lots of money. Uh, and I think that's sad and unfortunate. And like, I'm always like waiting, you know, at the dinner table at Thanksgiving for them to be like, so Eric, like Bitcoin's at an all time high. Like we were all totally fucking wrong. And we, we could have, you know, doubled our portfolios had we actually listened to you, but like, nope, never fucking happens. And I, and at best I, I try to bring up the Bitcoin thing. They're like, wow. Like the, I just don't understand this money thing. So how was the game last night? And I'm like, you know, you could like, you could have actually like rolled that into like a question being like, so Eric, like what is money? Like why is Bitcoin <laughs> actually different from the dollar? Cause I don't understand. And you seem to get it, but yeah, that never happens. And uh, I, I find it pretty sad and unfortunate. And like the other one is like, I, I, I'm still open to Bitcoin being fucking wrong. I'm I'm certain it's not. I mean, like, if you happen to be a top tier world cryptographer and you're like, check it out, there's this error in the SEP 256 curve that was chosen, and turns out the whole thing's fucking broken. You know, I'd probably contact the U.S. military first and like let them know and understand that fucking encryption standards don't work. <laughs> but uh, I just find it pretty fascinating how deep most people have fled into the them, and like they don't actually have a definitive idea of who and what they are their purpose in the world and that they're like much more interested in making sure everybody feels comfortable and safe rather than making a little bit of discomfort in a conversation that might force some thought and growth because like again i don't want to be a fucking asshole but why don't we think real hard about how things are going and what we would really desire for ourselves and others and like mm -hmm. i i don't know it's uh I know this Thanksgiving is going to get interesting with people being like that hateful bigot Trump. He was elected and he's going to destroy America now. I'll be like, yeah, like it was pretty bad when Hitler was elected for the second non-consecutive term. And w when he really <laughs> made the choice to go after all of uh, his uh, political opponents at that point in time. That was a really weird time in history, huh, guys? Yeah, rem mm -hmm. remember yeah. Hitler's bipartisan coalition, you know, like... <laughs> The Tulsi Gabbards of, of the Weimar Germany were joining up with Hitler. Like, no, it's so stupid, dude. I, I think um, if we take it at face value, everything Eric said is and Walker said is true. But like, um, you know, I think a lot of these things are, are just that family members just really don't fuck with each other for deep, deep familial reasons, like tra trauma reasons. And they're using the the Trump thing as a convenient excuse, right? With Rather than going to therapy and like hashing out their shit or having a frank and honest conversation. I mean, I have family members in my life who, you know, uh, I've, I've had these frictions with, and the truth is like, our relationship was never good. It goes, it goes deep to the psyche of, of both individuals, uh, in, you know, in the conflict, it, it relates back to our grandparents and their site. And, you know, it just goes back and back and you're like, okay, so I actually, I've been like cast in a play here of like some deep familial trauma and I'm not even like really aware of, of what's going on. And neither is the other participant. We just know that we don't like each other. And then you have this flashpoint of Donald Trump's election uh, in 2016 or in 2024 or whatever. And then that becomes the, the way to fissure, like cre it creates the fissures in the relationship and whatever. So I, th I think that's a lot of what's going on. Um, but I, I also think that, you know, more on the, the topic that you were saying about, you know, you, you were trying to talk to all these people and they wouldn't listen and whatever. I went through this myself. 
And what I realized is that I had survivor's guilt. So I needed to fix them for me. It had nothing to do with them. It was all about me. Um, it had to do with my own feelings of inadequacy around not being able to save my own mother uh, from her psychological issues. And then when I realized that, I was like, oh, okay, I can just stop doing that because it, it's not serving the other person. I, I thought it was my way into being a good person. Like, I'm a good person. I'm, I care about these people. I really want to help them and whatever. But the truth is, man, that there are people with a growth mindset and there are people without a growth mindset. And I'm a person with a growth mindset. I want to continue growing in life and doing, you know, because there's no, there's no stasis in nature, right? That's nature abhors a vacuum. Like there is no stasis. Um, everything's in constant flux. It's constant chaos. And you're, you're basically either growing or decaying, right? That's how nature works. And so we are a part of nature. That's how we work also. That's how we work psychologically. But for some reason, people don't think or believe this and they like to, you know, have this you know, sort of delusion that they're, they're a static element in a static system. Um, makes no sense to me. And I, I can't stand people who are like that and I don't want to be around them. So for me, after I realized the survivor's guilt thing, I was like, okay, yeah, I don't want to be around people that don't have a growth mindset. And so now I just am not. <laughs> so if you don't have that, if you don't think that way, I'm just not around you, bro. I don't know what you got going on and I don't care and I wish you well. Uh, I hope you get out of it, but fuck off. Yeah, I've, I've uh, you know, it, it's taken me a while to learn it, but <clears throat> particularly family, like it's as much as like I, I really want like deep connecting conversation and to, to, for like us to understand each other and for them to like meet me where I'm at. They have like zero fucking interest in that. Uh, like they really want to talk about the weather, like like anything that's like level one, maybe level two, but like level three, fuck no. Uh, and mm -hmm. it took me a long time to like button up against that wall being like, what, like, why aren't you guys turned on? Like, why don't like, you know, and like, like COVID was like a great example of like trying to bring that stuff up and, and like lots mm -hmm. of big conflict coming up. And it hurt me for a long time. Cause I was like, why don't they want to understand me? Like, this is so difficult. I want to be loved in the way I want to be loved. And like, I, I finally just kind of got to the place where I was like, oh, like this is their shit. They're incapable of it. And, like, the more I rock the boat, the more that they're going to resist it, making capsize more likely. And, like, I just need to be okay with doing the level one and level two thing with them. And the truth is, I can, I can do the level eight, nine, ten shit with you guys. And, like, that's, frankly, like, that's why I really fucking love the Bitcoin community is because, like, I can have real and sincere conversation where we actually think hard about shit and go deep and enjoy that. And like, that's kind of what friends are supposed to be for. Family can be for, you know, just loving them for who them in. And, you know, I love my mom, really great person. I'm never going to have a deep and thoughtful connecting conversation about the political nature of world and our reality with her. Going to have a really great conversation about how beautiful the sky is, but you know, that that's about as far as it can go. And that's okay. And so I just, uh, I really welcome people who uh, are going to go into this Thanksgiving ready to fist fight everybody. Just like eat like a fucking marijuana brownie before that and just like enjoy <laughs> staring at the vase or some shit. Like it's, it's not worth fighting your family and their, their stupid ideas of what they believe is right. Because the other is like, if you're a Bitcoiner, like uh, it's pretty clear that the next cycle is getting pumping right now. And so anybody who is even remotely smart in your family is going to come to you when Bitcoin's at $120,000 at Thanksgiving and being like, hey, you know, uh, you like made like some money with this, right? And you can be like, yeah, yeah I'm like really fucking high, but yeah, <laughs> I, I made some money with this. And they'll be like, could you, could you tell me a bit about that? And maybe that'll be your opening. Don't, don't expect it, but... Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that with what uh, the Trump team is up to, uh, they're about to, like, front-run destroying the entire financial system because that's, like, that's kind of their M.O. They're, like, good with this money shit, and they all clearly hold Bitcoin, and they're clearly going to be appointing people. So, uh, look, like, I'm not telling you what to do, but, like, if you like money, you should probably buy Bitcoin and keep holding it for a while because I'm pretty sure it's going to keep going up for a while here. Although there is some fucking moron right now who's absolutely going to slam their hand in the door and be like, going, going back to 15K. <laughs> 15K is no a way. Otto said it's not this. static bullshit. 58K, stable coin, static, static system. To be fair, oh, I love man. the 58K meme, and I am guilty of using it so much. But now I've also implemented the 158K meme. 
because it looks mm-hmm. almost the same to the to the unseeing eye. You just see fifty eight k, but but there's a one. Why not two fifty eight k? Why not three fifty eight k? Jesus, I hadn't why even gotten that far. Why not nine fifty eight k? Fuck. Why not, not one point two five eight k? Five point eight m. You know, like <laughs> fuck it. Right? Let's let's roll it up. Well, no, so. First of all, I, I appreciate you guys because you and I appreciate that we can have level eight and nine conversations, maybe someday a level 10. I don't know how high these levels go. So like mm-hmm. how this scale works exactly. But I appreciate that there exist people that we can have these kind of fucking talks with because it's, it, you're right. It's not always within the family. Um, sometimes it is. And that's very fortunate. Uh, but like if if that's not you out there listening, like that's OK, too. Like, you, you know, that's why that's why you're in Bitcoin, right? Because you can go meet with a bunch of other strange people who want to talk about how fucked up our monetary system is like ad nauseum and like yeah. are super fucking down with that. And that's a beautiful thing. But I'm curious because because Eric, you mentioned just like the Trump team MO being go in and kind of like fuck shit up a little bit in the in the financial system. Do you think, do you think, okay, like Trump is on board with that? Like, is Trump going to go full on end the Fed? Like, is Ron Paul coming on here and we are fucking burning this thing down? Or is Trump like, he's, I don't know about your, like the vibes you've gotten from, but he seems more measured lately. Like maybe it's, you know, almost getting assassinated. Maybe it's just a little, you know, a couple extra years. Maybe it's Barron being nine and a half feet tall standing next to him. And he's like, you know what? I'm not the biggest guy in the room anymore. I don't know. Where, like, where do you think we go? Where is Trump at on this? And like, do you think the team he's assembling is actually going to go in there and be like, no, we're going to we're going to bring the Fed down? Uh, I think from the standpoint, it looks like that's a possibility. But like, I, I am very, very deeply convinced that like uh, the deep state is absolutely and unequivocally in control. And there is no conceivable fucking way that anybody in any elected or any appointed position can like meaningfully stop any of this. Cause like, I, I can't really imagine the powers that be in the back room are like, Oh, you guys, they like, they like got the right people in the right position to like do stuff. Like, what are we going to do now? And they're like, dang, guess, guess we lost. We just got to accept it. So no, like, and, and like, I think Ron Paul and Elon Musk and all the people who get in the right position, they are absolutely going to try their best to do stuff. And then I'm pretty sure none of it's going to happen. Uh, you know, same thing, like totally hold my breath that Trump keeps his word about free and Ross day one, you know, going to be mum on yeah. the word until then. If it doesn't happen, I'm not going to be shocked. Uh, if it does happen, I, I will be the first to, to uh, give accolades to where they're due because that would be phenomenal, you know? Amen. My hope is is that everybody who's really full all the hopium of all this stuff will see the next two years play out. Very little will actually change in terms of it. Uh, yeah, and that, that's when I'm going to launch my, my radical states' rights movement to use the, the states to unilaterally fuck up the federal government. So, Dude, the, um, let's talk about the Ross thing for a second because yeah. did anyone have more on the line yesterday than Ross Ulbricht? No. Like, I mean... Ross Ulbricht's life hung in the balance. It was double life, rot in a prison cell for all eternity uh, until you die and are you know taken away in a casket or freedom in three months, freedom in two and a half months. I mean, that's a fucking crazy, crazy thing that, that he had to live through. You know, the potential that either one of these outcomes, it was like everyone was saying it was a 50-50 toss-up between these outcomes. And luckily, we're in the good timeline. And, uh, you know, I was hanging out with the production crew when I was at this, this thing last night. And, uh, you know, basically, they were asking me, like, why do you guys all care so much about Ross? And I, I said, listen, um, Ross's story is a miscarriage of justice. And Ross didn't deserve double life. He did do something wrong. He did deserve some prison time. Like, ser- that's just how it is. I, I know, like, the anarcho-capitalists would be like, no way, bro. But it's like, come on. I mean, we have a society that has rules. He broke the rules. Like, he, he, he does a little time. But he's at this point in life, he has paid his whatever debt he owed to society has been more than paid. Uh, he just created a website. He never hired hitmen. All that is bullshit. The the man who allegedly he hired uh, to have killed supports him. Is a vocal supporter of Ross Ulbricht. Um, I mean, you've been lied to about this case. The agents, the federal agents on the case, were dirty. 
Um, they were they were like stealing all of them from different yeah. agencies. Yes. Like every single motherfucking yeah, federal yeah, yeah. agent in that FBI. goddamn agency stole money. Yeah. Like it's fucking insane. And most of them like got off the hook too. And yeah. this is what I'm so fucking angry about: is the hypocrisy of it. Last time than Ross. <laughs> exactly. No, and I mean what, what I'm saying is like. This is a this case is a miscarriage of justice, and Ross deserves to be free, and he will be free in two and a half months. I'm not one of these Bitcoiners who's like, uh, "We'll see, bro. We'll see if Trump does it." Like, no, no, he's he's <clears throat> going to be free. It's a campaign promise. We put up serious money, and we went to bat for Trump, and now we're going to get Ross out. And the reason it's important to us this is what I told the production crew is because yes, all those things are true. It's a miscarriage of justice, etc. But what it shows is that we are ascendant politically, that we matter, that we're important. Things weren't supposed to happen this way, and then they happened this way. The state condemned a man to slow death, double life imprisonment, and we said, no, you don't get to do that. We got to rewrite the rules of the game as the game was being played, and it shows that we don't have to just sit there and take it. I mean, imagine the timeline where Bitcoin goes to zero. In that timeline, Ross rots in prison for the rest of his life. But we're in the good timeline where Bitcoin is at 76K, and Ross is free in two and a half months. And, I mean, it just shows that we are going to be players in the world. You're not going to be off in the woods with your, your cold card shoved up your ass. I mean, if you want to do that, like, that's fine. Like, get freaky. It's okay. Bitcoin is about freedom. You should really but, consider a ledger if you're doing that, you know. Like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for yeah, real. Don't, uh, cold card is very square. <laughs> um, listen, you want to shove it up your ass, you, you be my guest, okay? But, but we're, I we're really need to make a butt plug that that is specifically designed for this. <laughs> How has no one made that yet? Know, right? That's my we, question. We are going to be players in the world and we're the going to taker. have political power. <laughs> and we're also going to make some butt plugs. Okay? <laughs> that can you want a great butt plug? Please reach out. <laughs> We're, we're thinking of spin, spinning up a little uh, a little shop for them. Uh, they're going to be super nice, hypoallergenic, of course, really smooth on entry. Um, not so much on exit because you don't want that thing coming out necessarily, right? Like you got to keep it in there. Just to wrap that up, I'm happy for Ross, and I'm I'm happy for us. I I think like this is a big moment in Bitcoin's history. Ross being free is a big moment. You know. Well, Amen. and I, and and. You know, I, I'm on the opposite side. I'm going to hold my breath till it happens. And when it does, I'm, uh, you know, that'll bring me back in the fold. Some like crazy crypto anarchist land. Like I'm, I might like move into like far right political activism or some shit. <laughs> um, but it's really important to get that. Like we're an actual political force now. And like, I really hope that we're going to start behaving like it and that there's going to be yeah. like a real actual Bitcoin contingency because like. I actually think in the next four years, there's a real fucking shot of ending the Fed. And, like, I I don't think anybody inside the federal government will do it. But I do legitimately believe that, like, if we got 35 states to push through their state legislature legislation to, like, end the Fed, that that shit would get amended to the Constitution. And, like, the federal government would have to, like, flip the fuck out and figure out how to do that. Um, and I think it's really important because, like, the federal government is so out of fucking control at this point in time. We, we really need to start figuring out new and different methodologies to, to change how that can happen. So mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm just excited to see all the change that's happening. And also, like, fucking 100K is, like, in play now. So it's going to be really exciting when we get there. Oh, dude. Um, 100K I haven't heard from Vallis in, like, a year. Well, I've probably <laughs> heard him from him before. But, like, I hope his 100K party is still going to happen somewhere. Yeah, we're, what are we, I mean, I don't like to, you know, talk about price too much on this show because I'm not an open mouthed YouTube shill. Uh, but that being said, caveat, you know, it is like above 70. Say we're at like 76, 200 right now. That's just like kind of a trip, you know, and I, hold on, I agree with you that like as I was watching the price last night, I, again, I, I like I've been on the river these last like four days i've like checked twitter a couple of times and i was like no nah, that's that's not really of interest to me like i'm out in fucking nature catching fish hanging out with like my dad like that's what i want this is what i want to be doing right at this moment and but then i got back and of course i was like yes you know like bring it yeah. in um and then you know stayed up until 2 a.m watching msnbc as one does but like you could you could feel something was happening and i think you can feel something is happening now and I just wonder, like, does 
Bitcoin, like, because I would say that Bitcoin is, uh, it is inherently partisan, or excuse me, it is inherently political. It is not partisan, right? Yes. It is, like, money is always going to be political. We're talking about separating fucking money and state. Of course, that is going to be political. It is not inherently partisan. It is only partisan if partisans make it partisan. Um, and that's not to say the people that are pro Bitcoin are the partisans who are making it partisan. It's the ones on the other side who are reactionary to it, right? So I'm just interested to see, like, I mean, fuck, like, there, it's a it's a red fucking wave. Like, Trump blew out the popular vote. He's got the mandate, right? He obviously won the Electoral College. You've got a Republican majority in the House and the Senate. By all rights, they have no excuse not to do everything they claim they want to do, yeah. right? Like, 100%. They, they, I, there's no way, excuse. By the way, the Democrats going after us and, bro and broader crypto markets— was such, in retrospect, such a massive unforced error on their part. There yes. was no reason to make significant enemies of us. None. And all they did was suffer because of it. Um, now, like, I don't know how much we affected the election, but we affected it some non-trivial amount, okay? And it just, it wasn't something they needed to do, and they did it anyway because they were drunk with power. That's why they did it. I mean, they, they did it because, like, they believe their own retarded bullshit that they, right. like, they had literally pumped up their own ass intentionally, where they're, they're like, this is used for terrorism financing, and it's, it's so all the bros can get away with tax. And, like, it was all bullshit that they just repeatedly kept convincing themselves. Like, like, the fucking Greenpeace nonsense. And, like, the... Like, I feel so bad for the guy that's running that Twitter because, like, like all he does is tweet something and is immediately, uh, like, provided all of the evidence of how fucking wrong he is. And, like, the other thing that's just so shameful is that, like, these people are supposed to actually, like, give a fuck about the environment. And, like, what's more important than making sure that we're actually getting clean hydropower from power plants that were going to be shut down otherwise, you know, like... What's more important to people in sub-Saharan Africa who have never had access to fucking electricity and can't have clean water, and now they can? Like, it's it's just so disingenuous. And, like, again, I would really hope that, you know, the Democrats would sit down and be like, wow, we, like, we really fucked that one up. We should really, like, reconsider this. But uh, I have very, very strong doubts that that's going to happen, and it's going to be really interesting to see kind of what the what comes out of it. But yeah, I, I have a very strong expectation that they are going to continue to double down until essentially they fracture the Democrat Party into like there's either going to be a renewed moderated Democratic movement or it's going to fracture out into like different parties. Either way, it's going to be fucking entertaining. Can I say something controversial, guys? No, uh, I am. <laughs> I, I am. I am glad Elizabeth Warren was reelected. Because honestly, oh, was she? I, she was, uh, uh, she was against what, uh, John, John Deaton, right? He, it was yeah, like, he the, lost. yeah, yeah. yeah he, he lost. He had an uphill uh, battle. She's very well funded in her state. Oh, and Massachusetts she, she is. is a liberal. Huh, where'd that money come from? That's really and interesting. Right. From, uh, but he was funded by crypto lobbyists. Uh, yeah. but no, the reason I'm, I'm happy that Elizabeth Warren won is because I would have missed her. I would have honestly missed reply guying her all the time when she says <laughs> stupid fucking useless shit like that would have left a little bit of a hole in me. And I don't know how I would have filled it. Like I, I need something to butt up against. And like Pocahontas is the best. She, she's just the best for that. Like she, ah, it's like when she talks about price gouging, I see an Elizabeth Warren price gouging tweet. And I'm just like, ah, yes, I, I know what I'm doing today. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to have that. And, like, I also think, to, uh, to your point, Eric, like, she is going to, it, there, and to your point as well, it'll, like, unforced errors. She's going to continue to fracture the Democratic Party because, like, like, one in fucking seven Americans owns Bitcoin, like, owns Bitcoin. This is according to the study that Troy Cross did. There's probably a margin of error there. But even if it's one in fucking five Americans, that's already a shitload. And we are not even in, like number go up mania yet where people are like i probably need some of that yeah this is a growing coalition and to fight against it is just like first of all you're fighting against freedom and you're just fighting against people from all walks of life it's not like these are just the the crypto bros are all these 
you know, like not every, you know, Bitcoin bro is as fucking radical as Kaysen over here, you know, and I mean that in a, honestly the most complimentary way possible, just so you know, Eric. No, thank thank like, you. I appreciate the, that. Like, what, what the fuck are they fighting against? What are they anti? You're anti freedom. You're anti people being able to make decisions for themselves. But it's like, oh, like, it's like my body, my choice, like my fucking money, my choice. Fuck right off. 100%. Anyway. No, I, was I, was so glad, gonna... I was so glad she was reelected. That's it. I was going to say the same thing you said, which is that uh, it's such a it's such a bipartisan like coalition, multiracial, like pluralistic. Like, I mean, Bitcoin is a, a large tent. Like, the Orange Party is the largest tent we have politically, and uh, they did they made a large mistake going after us because you know, first of all, it's like. Are you dumb? You're going after young millennials with money who are multi, like racially diverse. The fuck is? Are you stupid? Like, what's wrong? It doesn't even make sense. It doesn't even compute. But anyway, listen. Th there was a referendum on these people last night. Uh, I feel confident that uh, this worldview is is going to be dealt a hearty blow, um, and they're they're going to realize that you know there's a new player in town, and it's the crypto lobby and the Bitcoin lobby. And David Bailey, in some non-trivial fashion, was responsible for freeing Ross Ulbricht from prison, um, or will be responsible for freeing Ross Ulbricht from prison, and for getting Donald Trump elected. He made a significant, you know, mark dent on this election, and he's the MVP of Bitcoin in 2024. Like that goes to David Bailey, number one with a bullet. Uh, there's no one else that even came close this year, and you know, I th I think. It just reminds me, I was talking with David Zell about this last night, that um, you can just do things. You can just do things. Whatever you want to do, you can just do it. Just do it. Elon wanted to affect the election. He just went out and fucking rounded up a bunch of Amish people and drove them to the polls because the Amish can't drive themselves to the polls. He was like, we will drive you to the polls. You hate the government, right? And the Amish were like, fuck yeah. They tried to shut down our raw milk and shit. And Elon was like, yeah, fuck that. We will drive you there. Let's all go vote. Uh, you can just do things. You don't have to wait for anybody. Nothing's decreed. Like, listen, fiat is a, is a fucking disease of the mind. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. And every currency on earth that's not Bitcoin is fiat. Ethereum is fiat. Solana is fiat. Tether is fiat. They're all fiat, okay? And then obviously all the fiat currencies are fiat. But fiat is not just affecting the, the monetary supply and you know, material goods like iPhones and shit. No, fiat affects you it affects your mind it affects the way you think you think that the world is decreed to you from scribes on high it's not the world is built by people that get out and build the fucking world so if you want to do something just go do it get politically active if you want to be politically active build a business if you want to build a business build a family if you want to build a family build an estate if you want to build an estate go to mars if you want to go to mars fucking just go do it do what you want to do that is the Bitcoin story. Not by decree. No one tells you to do it. You decree it. You fucking decree it. You go out and do what the fuck you're going to do in the world. That's what we're doing here in Bitcoin. A fucking men. I'm <laughs> fucking riled up right now. <laughs> Jeez. Well, the, you, the, to, to elaborate on your point, like, this fucking disease has rotted out. 95% of all of the creative potential of people everywhere. And it's great to see that that 5% is making the change for the other 90%. Like what we're seeing being developed in this entire system is fucking phenomenal. And people are not asking for fucking permission anymore. And I really hope between what we're seeing in Bitcoin and the renewal of this American spirit that like, like one of the things I didn't realize last night with that I was so excited about when I started watching the Bitcoin price go up and the markets go up, I was like, oh yeah, like, there's this entire economic engine that's sighing with relief now that they're not going to get fucked out of existence by a socialist government that fucking hates them. And that maybe there's real potential to actually create dynamic change. Like I actually, and I think it's really interesting that people are like this tariff thing's going to destroy anything. Like fuck that. This tariff thing's going to supercharge the fucking economy. Like it's going to turn out that like people that are importing cheap shit from China and they have to pay twice as much. They're going to go, you know, Maybe I'm going to buy the American made thing where I'm not going to have to pay twice as much for the same thing, you know? And, and like, that's a really great fucking thing. And I understand all the economic arguments about how tariffs work and otherwise, but like, let's be clear, cheap shit from China that's subsidized by slavery, like, it's not good for fucking America. You know what's good for America? 
shit made in America that paid mm-hmm. American people that give American salaries so that they can spend money in America. And like, not to get on the nationalist thing, but like the other thing is, is like the world fucking needs Americanism right now. Like yes. shit is fucked up and there needs to be a renewal of this American spirit that pushes out into the world that, you know, was what 1776 was about, which was a global revolution that then swept through Europe because they're like, yo, Europeans, look, we just like fucked up the British Empire and we earned our own rights by fighting these assholes. Would you like that? And they're like, yeah, th- this like monarchy shit is bullshit. Let's let's fucking fight. And I hope that we're going to see a renewal of that same spirit that we're going to fight back against our federal government and their surveillance in the deep state and that we're going to push that shit out in, um, into Europe and that the Europeans are going to be like, yeah, you know what? It turns out getting ass fucked by our government and getting global <laughs> surveillance through a CBDC is bullshit. Let's fight these motherfuckers. And I would love to see more than anything, see a sincere German nationalist movement renew itself instead of them living in their fucking shame about Nazism and like get that like that shit's over, guys, and that like Germans, you actually have some like really great shit about your culture that if you guys can protect in a meaningful way, very similar to Americans, and still be able to be inclusive with that ideal, like, there's something great to be done. But, like, living in all this shame about, like, ooh, like, we're a bunch of racist Nazis because we believe German culture's great is the same kind of bullshit that they're trying to tell us about because you believe in America and what America means, it doesn't mean that you're a far-right racist. It means that you're a fucking American that believes in the real values and ethics of what it means to be American. So... Mm -hmm. You know, fuck this fiat bullshit, fuck CBDCs, and it's time for us to really start rebuilding in a meaningful and thoughtful way on top of a Bitcoin standard, because that's really an American standard. Fuck yeah. Fucking it. Fuck, fuck yeah, yeah, man. Wait, fuck can it. we talk about Europeans for a second? Um, fuck because them. like, no. No. Wait, wait, just for no. one second, because have no. you noticed that the only people more confused about what happened in the U.S. election the Europeans, than the yeah. Democrats are the yeah. Europeans? They're like... Hold on. What do you what do you mean? Don't you understand he's mean and bad? And how <laughs> sad is this? These Americans, how do like it's it's mind blowing. And then you're like, God, like to your point, Eric, like, yeah, like I mean, like so I, I feel like sometimes I went through the stage like a stage in my life where I was like, oh, not I love America. I love America because I love the fucking American idea and I love the American people and I love the possibilities that the existence of the american idea allows for people in this country because it allows people to fucking create and build and do meaningful things but i went through a stage where i was like you know this is on my my bitcoin journey where i'm also like well but the fucking military industrial fucking war machine the fucking the fucking fiat monetary colonialism that's perpetuated by the imf and the world bank like and the federal reserve this is this is bad like and then I got to the point where naturally, like five seconds later, I was like, yeah, but that's not America. Like, right. that's fucking institutions. That is U.S. government institutions. Those are institutions of theft and destruction and death. America is a fucking idea, and it's the people who hold that idea up and use it as their fucking torch to bring light into darkness. And that is what I think people can get behind. And I think you should be able to fucking get behind that like, I don't give a fuck what political party you fucking identify with, like, this week or forever in your entire life. Like, there, I don't know if you guys have heard anybody say this before, but there is no red, there is no blue, there is the state, and there is you. Yes, there are meaningful differences in political parties. Obviously, there's a difference between Kamala, like, what Kamala's administration would have been and what Trump's will be. But ultimately, we are not a divided people. We are a people who are united around the idea that America is fucking amazing. That idea is fucking amazing. And we are going to be fucking damned if we will let the state usurp that idea for its own fucking death and destruction and theft. And I think I, I, I hope that more people can get around that and realize that, look, we're all on the fucking same side. There are two sides. It is the people, the independent individuals and it is the state. There is no other side. Like, there's no, there's no other sides. You can color the horse a different color, but, like, it's still the state. Granted, again, let me caveat, there are some differences, especially you get down to local governments. There's a lot of difference. But, like, we have so much more, not to sound fucking cheesy, we have so much more that brings us together than, than divides us. And what brings us together is the idea that America is fucking special. And if it wasn't for fucking America, Europe would be 
still have been fucked from those fucking German Nazis, actual Nazis. Like, uh, we have literally pulled Europe's own head out of its ass so many times, and yet they still look at us like, well, these, you know, uncouth barbarians. It's like, you know, fucking right, we're uncouth, and we're fucking barbarians. And there's a reason that you called us when you fucking got your panties in a twist and started murdering, tr like, millions of people. Because you couldn't handle it on your fucking own, you pansies. Like, I love, I, for any Europeans listening, I fucking love you because you're listening to this and you obviously have a set of balls or maybe not balls, you know, you may be a, a lady European, but like America is uniquely positioned to drive massive change in the world because of the American idea. That the is America, what I would by the say. way, the thing that's beautiful about America, the American ideal, what is it, right? Like people might not know, especially if you're from Europe, the American ideal is... I am the king of my own castle. Uh, I am I am the captain of myself, okay? I do not have to do anything that you want me to do. I am in charge of me. And if what I'm doing doesn't harm anyone, I should be completely allowed, and I'm well within every right, my God-given rights, to continue doing that thing. That is a new idea in the world. Uh, it's, it's a baby idea. It's only 250-some-odd years old, and not quite 250 yet. Um, it's only about 250 years old, and we have to protect that idea because that's the most important idea in the history of the world thus far. Um, and every time I see Americans exercise it, you know, and say, wait a second. Like sometimes Americans get caught up in this thing where they're like listening to people they shouldn't be listening to. You know, they're listening to the television, Rachel Maddow or whoever, Joy Reid, uh, Whoopi Goldberg. And then they, they go, wait, wait a second, what? They just wake up and they go, why have I been listening to this bitch? What the fuck am I doing listening to this person? I'm just going to do whatever the fuck I want. No! I'm doing what I want! <laughs> All right, well, the, Hoddle's out now because he did what he wanted. Um, <clears throat> it, Look, wait, these, computer, these are, computer these are really okay? important. I didn't hit the computer, but it's okay. It's fine. <laughs> I thought these, those were the, dramatic effect. That, yeah, it was, it was good. The, these are really important ideals, and like, uh, you know, uh, to, to reemphasize everything that you said, Walker, like, it took me a long time on my own journey as an anarchist that, like, like I'm, an, I'm an anarchist and I'm American. Like, I fundamentally believe that Americans on a whole, like, we have all of the same value sets. Like, nobody wants to hurt other people. Nobody wants to be hurt. People want to respect each other's right to private property. People want to see innovative and creative solutions and, and like, let people be freaky and do what they are. And so, like... Uh, I, I see reactions on both sides. It's like, look, like, if you want to be your gay, transgender lizard or, like, whatever the fuck you want to identify as, like, that's fucking great. Good for you. Like, do not come into the fucking schools and try to teach kids that shit. Like, I'm uninterested in that. In fact, like, why the fuck are we doing this school thing? Like, if you look at the, the fucking Department of Education, you know what every single standard has been measured to, to do each year? It goes fucking down. That's what it does. It teaches kids to be fucking stupid little robots that can't think for themselves. Like it, I find it deeply disturbing when I when my son has friends that are in public school come over and like how fucking remedial they are and how much they they don't. There's a certain creativity that they really lack that I find fucking disturbing. You know, and also on the same side, like just because people want to be weirdos and freaks, don't mean that we have to hate on them and, and remove their right to be fucking weirdos and freaks. It's just like don't. Uh, in the same way that, like, I'm not going to put my shit in your face, don't put your shit in my face and don't try to use public institutions to do that. There's, there's no fucking need. Same thing, like, I have no fucking interest in deporting people from this country just because they disagree with me on different principles. Like, w we need to learn to live in fucking peace and have a radical moderatism between us because without that, there, like, that, that's what America is all about. It's about being able to figure out how do we live with these ideals that allow for us all to flourish despite how different we are? You know, I'm like, Europeans, like, take a fucking cue from us. Like, you know, like, we, we figured out how to make this shit work. You guys are trying to model the same thing. But to be very clear, uh, like, what you guys are doing with the European Central Bank and the EU and shit, like, th this is not going to end well for you guys. And so I, I really encourage... Uh, and, the, and like, I've noticed this more coming from Germans specifically, like, y you guys need to redouble in your own nationalism and so far of that, like, you guys are actual independent countries, and you need to stop letting this fucked up institution that got created by a bunch of bureaucrats that told you that everything was going to get better with it, you know, like, 
I, I have an uncle that's lived in, in Berlin since the 1970s, and he knows the conversion of when they went from the mark to the euro fucked everybody over super hard. And that's how it is kind of universally. You guys should really consider taking back national sovereignty, destroying the European Central Bank, and probably, you know, the, look, like, the, the fact that the thing is ran by an actual fucking financial criminal who has been found <laughs> guilty of financial crimes, that's pretty fucking ridiculous. And it's pretty ridiculous that you guys tolerate this bullshit being shoved down your throat from Brussels. So I really hope that you guys are going to light shit on fire. Because, like, when you guys commit yourself to, to, to burning shit down and, like, throwing shit at people and other stuff, you guys are really good at it. Like, like lean into that. Like, keep, <laughs> keep doing more of that. Like, stop, stop with this other fucking nonsense. Because, uh, y- you know, you, got, you guys are going to get something pretty nasty out of it if you guys keep tolerating this bullshit. You know what I think the difference between the European mind and the American mind is, is that uh, in Europe for, you know, thousands of years, if you uh, talk back to the nobility, they could kill you with impunity, right? And in America, one day we took a look at the nobility and we were like, fuck you. <laughs> and we just killed everybody, bro. You, you know, know fun... so that's different starting points, you know, inception. Yeah. yeah. F- fun fact is that there is an actual amendment to the United States Constitution that is still active to be ratified by states that uh, if you are given a title of nobility in America, you will be stripped of all political rights and positions. Uh, I think it was the uh, – because there's like three outstanding articles that, that could be ratified by states but like aren't. Like another is about like child mm-hmm. labor. Uh, and the other one's Article the First, which – I, I've had another great radical plan of, like, forcing state legislatures to ratify Article the First to be. And it's called that because it was the first article to ever be pa- it, that passed through the congressional approval process. And it went to states to get approved, but it was never approved. And what Article the First stipulates is that no representative of the federal government shall ever represent any more than 50,000 people at a time. And to be mm. clear, if that passed today, that would mean that the House of Representatives would be like, 7,000 people or some shit like that. So that would be really fun if we, like, got states to pass that just to fuck up the federal government. Because this is my big thing that I want, not only for Americans, but for Europeans and all people everywhere, is that, like, I believe very, very strongly it is about states, provinces, and counties against their unified federal government. Like, if you look at what's going on in Spain right now after the crisis that happened in Valencia and how much the federal government is absolutely fucking those people over... This is where the real war is at. So uh, I'd like to see more radicalism uh, of states' rights against federal governments across the board. And I think that would really help uh, solve a lot of problems. Fuck yeah. Eric, you mentioned something earlier about, uh, like, just speaking of states' rights, that if, what was it, 35 states were to basically resolve internally, like, as independent states, that we should end the Fed that the federal government would basically need to scramble. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more for those of us who yeah, are less so, constitutionally so this, this literate? This is all a hypothetical f- way to be able to ratify the United States Constitution directly using state legislatures only. Nothing has to go through the federal government and it is not supposed to have any oversight. This has never happened in American history because every single time that this method has been used to amend the Constitution when it's gotten within two or three states. The federal government has essentially flipped the fuck out, and Congress has passed that amendment to the United States with the same language directly so that this was all circumnavigated. There, there was a Supreme Court decision in 1908 that essentially said, if states tried to do this, we wouldn't recognize it. But like, this is all about creating constitutional crisis because the 10th Amendment is very explicit in that any powers that are not enumerated to the federal government directly in the Constitution are reserved for states alone. So the whole idea would be essentially be go state by state, get uh, the exact same language passed saying that we are calling on an Article 5 convention to amend the United States Constitution to end the Federal Reserve and that the federal government shall have no oversight whatsoever around the issuance of a currency – uh, and in theory, it could pass. For me, the big goal is to like, get it past 33 states or something. Federal government's going to freak out. You're probably going to have the judicial branch being like, no, this is illegitimate. There's no way to amend the Constitution without the federal government. We're going to be like, Texas, what do you think about that? They're trying to say that your, the sovereignty of your state and what you guys decide isn't okay. Is that, is that something you agree with? How do you feel about that, Nevada, Wyoming? Is this, is this okay with you guys? 
Because for me, the, the, the big crisis that happened in America, which is where fiat money started in America, was during the Civil War. And, and uh, as much as everybody likes to, to suck Abraham Lincoln's dick and celebrate him as being a really great guy, uh, like, good job with, like, ending slavery, but, like, you, like, really fucked up a lot of other stuff with what you did in that. Not to mention that, like, explicitly creating an amendment to the United States Constitution that says that other people can't have slaves, but the the state itself can have slaves is pretty fucked up. So uh, with that, I really encourage everybody to look into the Article 5 ratification process. Uh, I, I really have a boner for the idea of using this to like fuck up the federal government across the board. Because to me, this is actually about a radical evolution of the political process that like I think federal politics is fundamentally broken. And if there's a way to lateralize a national movement that uses only states and state legislatures to start amending the Constitution, or even calling for an Article 5 convention to rewrite the Constitution on a whole, which is also specifically reserved by Article 5 in the U.S. Constitution, there's actually an opportunity for us to roll back radical federal power, destroy the deep state, and renew the American dream throughout the globe by essentially creating the American dream with the federal government and the deep state strip from it. So that's kind of my insane idea. Uh, you know, l let's have a couple lawyers and legal scholars come in here and tell me how I'm fucking insane or wrong or maybe even right. But uh, as far as I know, this is an actual thing that could happen. It's just been kind of buried in history for a long time. Yeah. Hodo, your thoughts? I mean, listen, I'm an Article 5 maxi as well uh eric has explained it to me multiple times i just you know i think like in practical terms i just i just don't think we're gonna be able to do that yeah. um yeah it'd be cool uh, it'd be cool if it happened you know i would be for uh, it uh, let's let's talk about some practical terms then because okay uh i i want to want to get your guys take on this whole bitcoin strategic reserve thing uh senator yeah. okay so you we uh we remember at the bitcoin conference in nashville uh Trump gave what I think was honestly incredible stand-up performance. Like that dude's that dude. He riffs like he's he, he's yeah. una, like you cannot argue with the fact that the dude can fucking what does he call it? He calls it the weave, right? You know, the like weave. he riffs. It's it's impressive. It's just we'll very back. My like nice are routine. The delivery man. So I got oh yeah yeah go go save the delivery man. Um, but and and he talked kind of like we're gonna keep the Bitcoin that we have. You know, we're not gonna sell any of it. Yep. He didn't like explicitly say we are going to start. You know printing fiat to acquire Bitcoin. He said he would protect the industry, though. He said a lot of positive things. Then yeah. as everybody is leaving the stage, uh, like after he finished, Lummis comes up and is like, I have a fucking bill right here. Like, I, I have a bill for the U.S. to establish a strategic Bitcoin reserve. And like, I felt bad because like, again, like people are like yelling, like everyone's leaving the thing. Like, and I'm yeah. sitting there like, she just like, this is fucking actually, actually news that Lummis is like, I've got a fucking bill for this. She's been on top of it since then do you, what do you think is the most likely scenario that's going to play out as far as the establishment of a strategic reserve is this something that like trump is going to be all for like once he gets a little more knowledge of it where like where do you think we're yeah, going so with this the way that trump said it on stage initially is is wrong um and can't yeah. happen so the bitcoin that have been seized uh you know by whomever uh, whichever government authority sees them then there are multiple government authorities that have seized them over time. They belong to somebody. They have owners, right? So, like, yes. most recently, the Bitfinex hack, there was $4 billion worth of Bitcoin or something um, that was seized by the U.S. government. But that Bitcoin all belongs to people, and it has to go back to them. So you can't use it for your national strategic stockpile, right? But in general, I think the idea of a national strategic stockpile um, – is, is something that is going to happen one way or another. I think it's inevitable. Um, whether it goes on the central bank's balance sheet or whether it's put into the hands of, uh, you know, uh, the executive branch, I'm, I'm not sure. But, you know, America is going to acquire a large swath of Bitcoin at some point. And I think there's a – the most interesting thing about it is the prisoner's dilemma of the nation-state level game theory around who goes first. So if you go first, you're the most advantaged, right? Um, but for some reason, I, I don't think this is widely known. And so nobody's gone first yet. Or maybe it's because we don't have younger people who understand these things or have gamed this out. Um, is Trump's administration an administration where we, we can do those things? I think maybe. I mean, J.D. Vance is a Bitcoiner. Vivek is a Bitcoiner. Robert F. Kennedy 
Jr. is a Bitcoiner. Tulsi Gabbard is a Bitcoiner. Elon Musk is a Bitcoiner. Trump owns a little bit of Bitcoin. He's dabbled in some, you know, crypto bullshit. He has his own shitcoin. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there there is a potential that it could happen this time around. Um, I, I think the most important or the most interesting thing to me is the game theory between other nation states. Uh, and, the, oh, and then the thing I was going to mention is in some... To some degree, I think uh, the the Bitcoin that's in the public markets is a honeypot for the U.S. government. So MSTR mm-hmm. is a honeypot for the U.S. government. Uh, the ETFs are the pubco, uh, you know, the public companies that have Bitcoin on Treasury, um, like Tesla. So those things are things that can be nationalized um, in a moment's notice if needed. Uh, but we're not on a Bitcoin standard, so the government doesn't need to seize your Bitcoin yet. Uh, if fiat starts to collapse, they may need to seize your Bitcoin. Or they, they may seize your Bitcoin. They'll never need to do it. I mean, they just will do it, right? And so, yeah, I think that's those are my high level thoughts around everything. There. Do you? I, I assume when you talk about a first mover advantage, you are uh, uh, discounting El Salvador in this particular instance because they do not print their own currency it's, because it's they are dollarized. It, well, yeah. and it's, it's also too small. It's just too small. El Salvador is a very poor country. Um, they're doing. Listen, they're doing great. They're on the upswing, but. They're not a player in the world. They don't mean anything. Like, I mean, El Salvador is a tiny nothing country with no resources. Like, I, I love now. what's going on for, down for there. For now. For now. Let's, let's, for let's, let's yeah. For so they're very small. If you looked at them on the map, it's like this big. Um, it's, yeah, it's Russia, China, America, uh, France, Germany. Those are the countries that one of them needs to go first. G7. Do you, so, I mean, like, Russia has been shifting some of its stances around Bitcoin mining and Bitcoin more generally recently. I mean, do you think that like that is like we're going to see a lot more of that? Because Russia was for a while very like, no, we're we are you know not a fan of this. I mean, you know, it's not the not the freest country in the world, let's say. And so freedom money tends to be a little bit, uh, you know, it's like oil and water, like they don't mix well. Right. Yeah. But clear, clearly they're realizing the geopolitical significance of Bitcoin, which is still sitting at like, I mean, I don't know what the market cap is right now after, you know, we're we're pamping. But like, you know, uh, we're, we're we're not over two trillion yet. We're at like what a, below a 1. trillion 5. and a half, like 1.5, 1. 1. which is which is fucking nothing like in the glo- grand scheme of things. Yeah. Like we are still fucking early. Smaller than Apple computer. Uh, yeah, uh, we uh, Bitcoin did just pass meta, though, right? Uh, I, I think like today, like, yeah. I, I believe so. Uh, but I don't know. That uh, piece of shit company is worth one and a half. Tr- like, what the fuck is wrong with this world? <laughs> I'm sorry. Dude, like that. Dude. That is upsetting that so many fucking it's... morons are on that goddamn surveillance platform giving away their information to somebody that fucking hates them. Instagram just, is very it... popular with the hoes, Eric. Very popular. I know. And Facebook's just very popular scrolling. with the boomers. Like, I think boomers are the only ones left on Facebook. I'm honestly convinced, which is hilarious, because the boomers were the same ones being like, this, this, these Facebooks are going to melt your brains. And now it's, they're like, you yeah. know, like this picture of uh, Donald Trump and Jesus is incredible. Like, when did they take this? This is amazing. Like, I don't think boomer, boomers have really bad AI detection skills also. That's a slight digression, but it leaves them very vulnerable to manipulation, I think. It's, it's, which is, it's also kind of cute and endearing, like, you know, God bless you. You bought your house for two raspberries and now you're a multimillionaire, you know, like, Look, hey. like in all honesty, like I see the next decade is uh, like there's going to be this really it's funny because I remember I was at Burning Man. I'd taken a bunch of acid and I was talking to a younger friend about this and I like went on this crazy diatribe. I was like, yeah, in 30 years, we're going to have like a youth fascist movement that's just going to be all about like fucking stripping the boomers of their property and like sending them off to the prison camps for liquidation just because people are going to be so fucking angry at the way that they feel like they were robbed and stolen from. So like, I don't know. It's very similar to that, uh, June podcast where, where he talked to that, that young scammer yeah. where yeah. like he, was he, amazing. he was pretty indifferent to the way he was ripping people off. And like, in all honesty, like young, young people have like a pretty good point. Like, yeah, like if an AI boomer, if a boomer can't tell the difference between like Donald Trump and an AI bot and you can rip him off doing that, like, why shouldn't you? Like, yeah, he, he made his millions of dollars from watching his house inflate, you know, because of how fucked up the monetary system is. So why shouldn't you just engage in outright graft? I'm not saying that that's right in any way, meaningful way. Like, it's an honest and open ended question that 
frankly, I really struggle with, uh, like, meaningfully answering to them because, like, yeah, this system has absolutely fucked you and robbed you, and there is no meaningful way that you are going to crawl out of the hole that you've been forced to live in. So, like, I don't, I don't know what you can really do to try to protect yourself other than get yourself on a you, Bitcoin standard. But you probably you, shouldn't be robbing people because that's fucked up. Do you think that's yeah. true, though? Like, didn't you feel that way when you were 18, 19? Because I did. I felt like the boomers had pulled up the ladder. Uh, they got rich selling houses back and forth to each other. We were never going to be able to do the same thing, et cetera, et cetera. And then God was just like, boom, here's here's digital coins, bitch. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> this is amazing. I'm richer than these guys could have ever dreamed. Of. <laughs> you know? So, I, I mean, mean I for, for me personally, like. something on the horizon, you know? For me personally, yeah, but like I, and like this is one of the things I always struggle with is that like we're in an extremely unique position, you know, across yeah. the board. Like that's one of the reasons I didn't just like take the money and run is that like I feel a real obligation towards speaking to the very real power that this has to like right the economy in a meaningful way again. And with that being said, like if I was 20 years old looking at the economy right now, like I would very sincerely be trying to build a career as probably both a drug dealer and a scammer, just because I'd look at the world and be like, why the fuck should I participate in any of this goddamn non, like you want me to fork out $400,000 to get a fucking bachelor's degree while you got that shit for free. Like why the fuck shouldn't I just set fire to everything and watch it burn? Because what do I have to win in this system? Like, oh, oh, like I I can work for 30 fucking years so I can get a down payment on a home that then I'll spend the next 30 fucking years trying to pay off, scraping by? Like, I think shit is really, really fucked up. And I think the only reason that kids aren't outraged is because they're so dopamine addicted to the scrolling that they can't even pull their head far enough out of the phone to stop and look around and go, gee, shit's really fucking bad. But that terrifies them so they look back at the phone and keep scrolling um so i think shit's kind of sad right now but uh you know like i i hope i'm wrong and that it's not actually that dark out there but from the from the young people that i speak to like there isn't a rage about it there's like a very real defeat that like they have been beaten down into a cage that like they're just doing their best to figure out how to be in so uh w while i do agree that i did feel that way when i was younger like I very sincerely feel like I just like found the fucking glitch in the system. And I remember like picking it up and being like, there's no fucking way that like magic internet money is going to become the global standard of the future and like make a difference in the 2024 presidential election. And the funniest thing is, is that like there was no political conversation about Bitcoin, in my opinion, up until about 2016. Like there, there was no conceivable different you know like crypto didn't even exist on a whole there was a bunch of shit coin copies like litecoin and feathercoin and shit but it was only with the premiere of ethereum that that bitcoiners were like hang on like we're trying to like make a kind of money that you can't fuck with and they're like yeah like i thought i thought this was the whole thing that we could just like make up clown coin and like make a bunch of money and i was like oh i think we have like different ethics here and they're like huh so like you don't want any clown coin and i was like no i want mm -mm. <laughs> Good luck with that, though. <laughs> now, I mean, you know, I, I think that... Okay, so one thing is, did you see the um, the scammers who got caught for $250 million? They, they They hit up a Genesis creditor for $250 million. Did you see that story? Oh, yeah, yeah. Wasn't this a while ago that they, they just, you know, it was like he, he had, like, fucking, uh, like, 2FA, like, through text or some shit, and they, they yeah. just... They yeah. posed as, I think they posed as Genesis or so. I can't remember how the scam worked. But anyway, like they got $250 million in Bitcoin off of this guy. Um, and it wasn't that long ago. It was like six months ago or something. And then what did they do? They went out to the clubs in Miami and LA and they started buying OnlyFans girls Birkin bags and Lamborghinis and whatever. And my favorite text message from the thread is, by the way, and then the FBI caught them two months later because everybody who's ever seen Goodfellas knows you don't go out and buy a fucking pink Cadillac day one. Are you fucking retarded? Robert De Niro is going to whack you, okay? Kids don't watch uh, oldies they, anymore. They don't no. watch uh, or, Yeah. The it's answers like, are all there. They, they the gave you the answers. Bought pink, he bought a pink Lambo for a girl. That is in Goodfellas. The guy does that, and then he gets whacked. Anyway. Um, also, like, she's not going to bang you either way, bro. Well, that's, like, yeah, that's, that's like the most beta fucking move you can make. <laughs> Seriously, so, so, dude. 
So there's a text message from the girl, and uh, he goes, hey, uh, what's up? I bought you a fucking pink Lambo Urus. Uh, you want it? Let's be friends, whatever. And she's like, uh, LOL, um, I have a boyfriend. Mm, sorry, man. <laughs> you know? And it's like, dude, you are going to get ass raped in federal prison for the next 10 years, and you couldn't even get the girl to sleep with you after you bought her a fucking Lamborghini. You know why? It's because when you earn money that way, Girls know. They know that you're a fucking loser. They can feel it. They can sense it, right? And so, like, she didn't want to have anything to do with you. So it's like, you, what'd you get out of the? What did you get out of the score, bro? You went to fucking Rodeo Drive and wore some gay Louis Vuitton shit for a little bit, and we're in the nightclub, fucking sipping on fucking Casamiga, fucking Don Julio, whatever the fuck. Like, what the? That's nothing. Yeah, not not you to digress. Your life for nothing, bro. Come on. But like, if if you want to like get rich and make a bunch of money to like get all the 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 hot bitches, like I I got news for you. Like it's not it's not gonna work in any meaningful way. And like you're actually gonna find yourself in like a super bitch beta position where you're gonna be like, huh? Like I just like drove this girl in my Porsche over to this guy's house that she's like not that this isn't my boyfriend. It's just so, her trainer, dude. It's just her trainer, dude. It's it's just Pilates she, it's instructor. Like, it's cool, man. The only yeah. guy who can work her glutes right, bro. It's <laughs> I'm gonna, you know, she needs me to pick her up in a half hour, so I'm just, I'm gonna hang out at this coffee shop just because. I wonder, wonder why she's doing only a half hour of Pilates, though. It's kind of <laughs> strange. Doesn't seem like enough like to be a good burn. No, dude, it's it's more intense sweat, dude. If you do it that way, it's what. Uh, well, and, chat, and look like the. Her <laughs> the this is all part of the general nihilism that's playing out because, like, when when you get when you get that money. When you get money that easily, that quickly through doing dumb shit like scamming, like it, you're you're not gonna like stop and be like, whoa, like I I finally got the lotto ticket to get out of here. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna buy a couple laundry mats and maybe like uh you know like a, a driving range and a couple other places that can really generate some cash flow for me. No, you're gonna do like a bunch of retarded shit like that and you're gonna blow the money. And, and like, this is one of the things I love the most about Bitcoin is like. Look, bit, like Bitcoin doesn't solve cash flow problems or if like you don't have any meaningful like model that you're operating from the world from. Like if if you can't save money, like you will not have any fucking Bitcoin. But like if you're somebody who's like thoughtful and saving money and you have like a 401k and you've like played their game and gotten fucked by that, like Bitcoin's going to be hugely helpful for you because like now you're actually going to have a like savings that like does the thing it's supposed to do. So good on you. Um and also, like, I'm sorry for all the younger kids that are getting fucked by this system that hates them. Like, you really should be on only a Bitcoin standard. And if you're not, like, I, I, I would love to hear your solution on why we're fucking dumb and, and you have the solution. Because as far as I can tell, you're going to work at a Starbucks for the next 30 years and live in your mom's basement. And, like, maybe, maybe if you want a family, you'll have, like, a chihuahua or something like <laughs> Look, I got two dogs right now. Like these motherfuckers eat like nobody's business. So like, get a really small dog that like you you like don't need to like feed a lot of food Dude, to. You know what though? It's all mentality. Truly, it's like um, people don't. When you talk about like having children and and caring about yourself for the future and you know making money and how making money is a good thing, younger people are just straight up confused, right? And to us, that's like that's the default that we grew up in. Um, those are our values. And yeah, but younger people are like, what? Is this some sort of like trad, like trad, trad movement thing, dude? And you're like, what? This is called being a normal person, retard. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. You and, and say it's, that it's word so anymore. because it's so like they haven't heard it. They've been being, dude, if you go to public school, you have been being lectured by cat ladies eight hours a day for a fucking 15 years. Okay. Like, and they have like fucking unicorn fairy tattoos on them and stuff and they're like donald trump is a racist that's what you've been dealing with okay so you come out of that and then andrew tate's like if you want to be a fucking man you gotta have a fucking bugatti and then you go fuck this is fucking speaking to me dude right <laughs> like whereas when we were young that was just like common sense it was like yeah, sports cars and hot chicks. Like, that's what we like, bro. Like, the fuck? Like, nobody feel... needs to tell you that, dude. Like, yeah. I feel really fucking bad for younger people. Now. Like, particularly, like, if you're, like, a young guy going through puberty and, like, you want to, like, go talk to this girl, but you're all nervous because you've watched all this, like, cancel culture shit. Like, now you're too terrified to ever go talk to her. 
And now, like, you haven't talked to any girls in your whole life and you want to, but you can't. So, like, you feel like a total fucking wiener. And then, like, somebody's like, well, if you feel like a wiener and, like, being a man's really hard, like, maybe you're a woman. And now you're like, maybe I am a woman. And, like, I, it's, it's fucked up. It's, it's really wrong. And, like, a lot of times these poor kids just need somebody to be like, yeah, like, you need to go talk to the woman. She could possibly, like, get really upset and sue you or some shit. But chances are she's just going to think you're kind of weird and... You'll feel uncomfortable and walk away, you know, being blown out. And, like, that's okay. That That's part of life. It's okay when a woman rejects you. It doesn't define I'm, you as a human being. I'm not supposed to say this, but if you're a teenage boy, uh, go out and get a little drunk and do donuts in a parking lot, okay? I'm yeah. not supposed to say that. You, you probably it's, shouldn't do it. But it's great you know, advice. Should, it's terrible advice, probably, but it's great advice. You should probably do it. You know what I mean? Like, in an empty parking lot. Empty. Don't go on the road. Just some donuts. And Do honestly, if, if you Don't live you. in the mid, yeah, and if you live in the Midwest, like wait until like you've got a little bit of snow there. Wait until it's a little right. bit slick. It's much safer to do the donuts when your wheels are actually sliding versus you're like burning rubber. So that that see, we're tempering the donut advice with some good Absolutely. Midwestern, you know, uh, logical advice there. You know, uh, I think and Hodel, I know you've got a you've got a hard stop coming up soon. I think we may need to do an entire other show about uh the fact that uh you know who hates homeschooling and who has had homeschooling illegal for a long time germany germany right. thank you yeah. Odo. it's it's i appreciate you knew where i was going with that yeah. and you know who implemented that it was the fucking nazis why did they implement the fact that you can't it is illegal for you to homeschool your kids for you to raise and instruct your kids at home because they wanted to fucking control the narrative and control your kids and indoctrinate them and make them good little fucking Hitler's youth Nazis. And then we can go back a little bit further to the Prussian system of education, which is like what kind of was the genesis of the you know Nazi system, which is we want to create great little worker bees and great little soldiers. And the only way we can do that is if we have control of them from the first time they're able to fucking formulate a word until they are of a you know an age where it's appropriate to send them off to fucking work until they die or fight until they die. I digress a little bit, but the point is that if you don't like homeschooling, you're a Nazi. And I mean that literally, <laughs> not like that everyone's a Nazi thing. Like you're literally agreeing with what the Nazis wanted. So congratulations, you're a literal Nazi, not a figurative <laughs> Nazi. That's. I just wanted to get that off my chest a little bit, guys. I'm, as as a homeschooled guy myself, who then went to public school because my parents uh, said it's your fucking decision, do what you want to do. They didn't swear at me at that time. They just said it's your decision. But I added the fucking. But that was a fucking trip getting into public school and realizing. I thought I was going to be real stupid. That was like my big worry. Where I was like, Mom and Dad, I think I should go to public school. Like, what if I'm not as smart as the other kids? They're always all my friends that I play sports with. They're always doing homework and all this extra work. Like, they've got to be way ahead of me. And they were like, okay, that's your decision. You can decide to do that. But like, you've got to, you know, like it's your, it's your choice. So anything that comes with it, it's your, you know, your responsibility. Okay. Uh, and then I got to school and I was like, oh my God, everybody is fucking stupid. Holy hmm. shit. They are catering to the lowest common denominator. And this is a fucking joke. Um, I dig and I'm not even like that smart. Like I was smart enough to be a valedictorian in like kind of a bumblefucky town, but that's like. You know, like you're the you're the skinniest kid at fat camp. You know what I mean? Like it's like okay, like nice nice job, but like you're still fat. Like <laughs> all these kids from her high school listening right now, being like, hey, I'm not hey, that. hey, I'm not that. I offered water, you, you water know, my glue, and he sniffed it. I thought we were friends. I I knew some fucking great fucking people, and there were also some great fucking teachers in there who actually were like, fuck this administrative bullshit. I'm just gonna actually teach these kids. They were also the teachers always getting in trouble with the administration for like, you're not following the curriculum, you know, like, but, and like, I fucking love the small town that I grew up in because there are fucking great people there. Um, the point is that the public school system did no one any favors. Uh, and you know what? You just don't fucking need it, man. You should do like an hour or two of school a day and you'll be fucking good. That's all I did. And then, then I went and started fires, like not yeah. pyro fires, but like, I like to start controlled fires. Who doesn't? You know what I mean? It's part of, and if you're a young guy listening to this and you've never just gone and started a fire, fucking a, go and start a fire because <laughs> no self-respecting woman will marry you unless you can start a fire. Like, yeah, and do it, I'm, do I'm it just in a metal you. trash can though, or like yeah. some, somewhere that you're not gonna start a forest fire. You know, like yeah, Smokey the Bear. Yeah, point. again, not pyromaniac fires. Start controlled fires. 
learn how to control them and be a responsible member of society who knows how to make flame. Like, fucking hey, that's the only reason that we started drinking bone marrow that was actually cooked and had our brains grow. And you want to spit on that? I don't think so. I've digressed a little bit, but it felt like I needed to digress a little bit to get us off track enough for Hodel for me to allow you to make a, a graceful exit here. How much more time you got? You, you got time for uh, one last I got, thought? Yeah, I got, I got like five more minutes. I can do five okay, more minutes. Okay. Diatribe. So, okay. Do it. First, I just want to say thank you to everybody who tuned in on this Noster only live stream. Fuck YouTube. Fuck live stream on Twitter. Fuck wherever else you can live stream like Twitch. I've never used it, but I hear the kids do. <laughs> Um, all these sats that you guys have sent, which is almost 50,000 sats, which is awesome. I'm going to send them all to open sats and provide receipts. So thank you guys for doing that. We're going to fund some open source development while okay. shitting on ridiculous people. Um, closing thoughts, gentlemen. Hodel, you want to kick us off? Yeah, let me think about this here for a second. Um, what are my closing thoughts? <laughs> I think... I, I, I think... Um, in general... You gotta just keep living, man. No, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't. You don't have to have anything. You already dropped so much wisdom. Um, well, okay. Come er, back er, to me. Do Eric first. <laughs> er, Eric, what, what what about you? What do, what do you want to leave people Look, with? Look, uh, <clears throat> Trump getting elected was like a, a the the whole market was like waiting to see whether or not we were going to go into like socialism hell or if there was going to be an opportunity for something meaningful to happen. Uh, now something meaningful is going to happen, and Bitcoin's going to yep. rip super fucking hard in the next six months. And so, like, if you've been like, oh, I've been like stagging a little here and there, but I got my four hundred one k. Like, you don't have enough fucking coin. You're going to want more coin later, and you should stack harder. Um, so you should really consider about like put you know like stop messing around like fucking shove it in like like put the whole thing in and enjoy what it means and be like fucking go for it in addition to uh you know you should really think for yourself you know like no nobody actually has all of the right fucking answers and if you actually spend some time and energy thinking hard about what your values are and what you want for the world and for yourself you're probably going to come to some great conclusions uh you know so i really hope that more of you are going to fly your freak freak flags and like do your own thing Walker, you're a great example. You're just doing the Bitcoin podcast. Despite the fact that Bitcoin podcasts were saturated as fuck, you were just like, you know what? I'm going to try my own fucking thing. Turns out people like you and like listen to you. So so even if it seems in other people are like, hey, this is saturated. There's too many people. Like, go do you and what you're supposed to. Like, that's what the world wants. That's where you're going to find your power. And that's where you're going to make the most money. Don't wait for somebody to be like, you need a college degree and to suck five dicks at this law firm <laughs> to get a job to practice law. Like, find like find the fucking hack figure out the way that you can actually go do the thing that you want to do what is the world wants for you and other people want for you the system does not fucking want for you like realize that right now you're going to be way fucking ahead for yourself so i hope to to see all of you young entrepreneurs with the production of all of the great and wonderful things that you will be accepting only on a bitcoin standard because you're smart enough that you don't want to get fucked holding a bunch of fiat that's going to go to zero that's the end of that what i have to say i am um, hey, fucking I actually do have something to say. I was I was thinking about this. I, I think uh, going into the bull market, an important message for people that they need to be aware of is that, yes, you should go hard. I, you know, that, that, there's that clip of me on Walker show saying stack your fucking ass off and all that. And like, yes, you should go hard. You should you should be here. Uh, you should be fully committed to this and you should be, you know, investing a significant portion of what you have available. All true. Um, but, you know, in bull markets, people take leverage and leverage is something that people mistakenly think is a time machine to being an OG. Um, and it's not. And, you know, we've seen a lot of people get wrecked. So if you are going to take leverage, be extremely careful. Um, it's it's one of those things that like if you warn enough people about doing it, the people that, you know, ignore all the warnings and walk through all the warning signs anyway, and then go do it and succeed, they were always meant to succeed. But for the vast majority of people, like you won't succeed. You know what I mean? So like, you really should heed the warning. And only you know, if you're that person or not, and everybody thinks they are that person. But you only find out you're not that person who can walk through all the warning signs until you get fucking destroyed. So don't get destroyed. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> by, the, by the way, this is being said by the man who made a Bitcoin by betting the man who had the leverage platform that his leverage platform would go bankrupt within right. a year, <laughs> and it fucking did. True. So true. just saying that Hoddle might actually know a little bit about what the fuck he's talking about. 
So with that, please don't go long and slam your fucking dick in the door because there's a 10% drawdown, <laughs> which could very well happen when we hit an all-time high and your retarded ass did a 10x long and didn't realize that that's what happens. You get fucking liquidated when the price goes down. So don't be fucking retarded and lose the little bit of Bitcoin that you have because you thought that you could get more Bitcoin because you were smarter. You're not. You're a normal fucking person who will hurt yourself if you do that. So, sorry, so, I just really wanted to add no, that. No, 100%, 100%. <laughs> and two cardinal sins here in Bitcoin you need to be aware of heading into the bull market is, number one, not being bullish enough on Bitcoin. That's the biggest sin. It's the biggest sin anyone can make. Number two, unfortunately, is being too bullish on Bitcoin. So <laughs> you got to strike the balance right in the middle there. Um, because if you're on either side, you're getting fucking wrecked, okay? So the best way to do that, stack your Bitcoin, hodl your Bitcoin, do it in self-custody, do it in cold storage, do it with a multi-sig. Um, don't go crazy on this, these products, these MSTU and BTU and fucking these leveraged products you can now get access to in the markets. Don't go crazy on MSTR stock. Don't go crazy on shit coins or meme coins. You know, everybody has a plan. I've met a lot of guys who had a plan to get to 100 Bitcoin uh, who ended up with zero Bitcoin, right? So, like, try not to be one of those guys. You know, if your plan has three elaborate steps that involve you hitting a one in a million shot three times, you're not going to execute that plan, man. I, I couldn't execute it. I don't, I don't know why you think you're good enough to. I don't know why anyone would ever think they're good enough to. Like, you know, be smart. I've got a fucking three-step plan, and it's called DCA. And yes. Fucking... D like literally guys n none of us are as smart as we think we are um and like that's good like you being too smart is just a, a pain that's why you know that's why you need to drink and stuff um, totally. but like l literally just like just fucking dca like it, it's actually like just this chico like you can just buy bitcoin it, set up a daily dca buy and then set up an hourly dca buy and it'll just split the difference and you will be in large profit in the long term and i have not been around as long as you guys been around since 2020 and i just dollar cost average and you know what it works okay and i try to create some value and eric to your point i i i i appreciate that that you that you see this journey that i'm on creating another fucking bitcoin podcast but i just want to say until there are more bitcoin podcasts than insufferable fucking finance bro podcasts there are not enough bitcoin podcasts we need to this needs to be the flipping where Bitcoin podcasts are more plentiful than fucking finance, bro. Like here, here's the real, you know, re real estate stock uh, stocks that you should buy that'll generate some passive income for you in your 401k. It's like Jesus fucking Christ, grow some balls and buy some Bitcoin, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, listen, I fucking appreciate you guys. Thanks for hopping on here. Uh, this this was a very enjoyable time, and I know that people fucking love hearing from both of you guys because you are principled dudes who always lay it out straight. And uh, we are we are very blessed to have you in this fucking strange community of people. And it's great to fucking hang out with you guys. And I hope we can do it in fucking person over a beer again soon. Um, but yeah, Hodel, get the fuck out of here. Case it, uh, I'm, I'm, you guys, for everyone listening, I'm going to kill this live stream now. And we're going to just to make sure these guys are uploaded. So fucking love you all. Thanks for joining. I'm killing it now. And that's a wrap on this Bitcoin Talk episode of The Bitcoin Podcast. If you are a Bitcoin-only company interested in sponsoring The Bitcoin Podcast, head to bitcoinpodcast.net slash sponsor or send an email to hello at bitcoinpodcast.net. If you are enjoying The Bitcoin Podcast and find it valuable, give it a boost on Fountain, a five-star review wherever you're listening, or better yet, share this show with your network so more people can learn about Bitcoin. Or don't. Bitcoin doesn't care, but I sure do appreciate it. You can grab links in the show notes to watch or list this show wherever you get your podcasts or go to bitcoinpodcast.net slash podcast. And you'll also find the links to follow me and the show on Noster and on X. Bitcoin is scarce. There will only ever be 21 million. But Bitcoin podcasts are abundant. So thank you for spending your scarce time to listen to the Bitcoin podcast. Until next time, stay free.